is this is part four. This is the last part of the um of what we've been going over with uh Ken Wamabuni. And it's um it's been kind of long because he's very he was very important not only to our style of karate because he's the one that started Shitaru, but he was really important to um karate in general, uh, with other styles of karate. So um so again, this one was a little bit more um, lengthy just just because of that. Okay. All right. So this is Legends of Karate, Mabuni Kinwa and His Shitaru, Part Four. And this this section is titled Mabuni's Influence on the Japan Karate Association and Shotokan, which is one of the other main styles of of karate. All right. Now says another quite important aspect often overlooked is Mubuni's strong influence on Gichin Funakoshi in the development of the Shotokan style. Gichin Funakoshi was the one that started Shotokan. Uh, and Funakoshi and Mubuni already knew each other from their time in the Karate Kinkyukai on Okinawa, which was a group that Mubuni had started and was al and always kept in close contact. Back in Okinawa, Funakoshi had two main teachers, the Minister of State, Asato Anko, and Mabuni's later teacher, Itosu Anko. Although Funakoshi considered Asato as his most important teacher, Itosu taught him by his own account, the Heian, Teki, and other kata. So um, Itosu, which was one of Mabuni's teachers, taught um, Funakoshi all the Pinan kata, um, the Naifanchen kata, which you guys would learn later, and some other kata. But especially in view of the five Pinan kata, this direct line of transformation between Itosu and Funakoshi is not as definite as it might appear on the first view. There are some hints indicating that Funakoshi did not learn Pinan directly from Itosu, but rather from his student Mabuni. We know that Funakoshi started his karate training during primary school in between 8 and 10 years of age, and that he studied for the next 10 years with Asato and Itosu. Most likely, Itosu had developed the Pinan forms by himself using uh, the Basai series of kata, Kosukun series of kata, Yusei Shi, Chinto, and Chinte, which are higher level kata, and published them for the first time in the spring. So. The, the Pinan kata that we do were taken from other higher level kata, different sections of those kata. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, and he published them for the first time in the spring of 1904, quite some time after Funakoshi had trained with him. Makoto Gima, a direct student of both Itosu and Kintsu Yabu, and Funakoshi states, that Funakoshi just learned the Pinan right before his departure to Tokyo. So he's saying that he learned all the Pinan kata right before he moved to Japan. Opposing this is a statement by Shoshi Nagamine, the founder of Matsubayashi Ru, that Funakoshi had already taught them to Okinawan school children in 1916. The renowned Japanese karate historian, Dr. Ryozo Fujiwara, However, says explicitly that Funakoshi learned the Pinan Kata from Ken Wamabuni in 1919. So the guy that started Shotokan learned all his Pinan Kata from Ken Wamabuni, who started our style. On basis of the available facts, the transfer of the Pinan Heian forms can't be clearly traced back to one of those two lines of transmission. Against the direct transmission speaks, the fact that just Funakoshi's own statement dates a performance of Pinan Kata by Funakoshi before Tosu's death in 1915. For a direct transmission, on the other hand, speaks the huge period of time of over one decade between 1904 and 1915, in between Itosu's first publication of the Pinan and, his, and the time that he passed away. In view of that, you also have to consider that Okinawa, Okinawa's karate scene was rather clear and manageable in those days. 
and the humble opinion of the author that a hybrid of those styles, for instance, a brief instruction by Itosu and a later adjustment and deepening by Mubidi appears most likely. A similar conclusion can be drawn from the statement that in 1928, Mabuni corrected the Pinan forms Otsuka had been taught by Funakoshi. After his relocation to the Japanese mainland, Gichin Funakoshi himself considered 15 traditional kata to be enough um, for the growing of his idea of karate. He explains those big 15 both in his first publications, Rukyu Kenpo Karate and Rintan Goshin Karate Jutsu, as well as the two editions of his master text, Karate do Kyohan, from 1935. So in these different kind of books that he wrote, um, he explains the importance of those 15 kata that he did. In his work, Karate do Nyuman, which means Introduction to the Empty Hand from 1943, Funikoshi, however, writes that furthermore, the forms Tenokata, Shinokata, Hitokata, Rohai, Sochin, Unsu, Shoto, Chinte, Gojushio, and Jin have been studied and investigated in his dojo. While Shoto, Tenokata, Chinokata, Hitokata, Hitonokata are Funikoshi's self creations, we do not know exactly know what line of transmission kata like. Rohai, Unsu, Chinte, Sochin, Gojushiho, and Jin come from. So we're, they're saying that they don't know where those, who developed those kata. Funakoshi students Masatoshi Nakayama, Hidetaka Nishiyama, and Isao Obata founded the Nihon Karate Kyokai, or the Japanese Karate Association, in May 1949, and with that, no doubt, laid the headstone of the worldwide spread of both the Shotokan style and of karate in general. Shortly after the foundation of that organization, they added the next kata, the forms of Basai, uh, Basai Sho, Kosukun Sho, Gojo Shio Sho, Nisei Shi, and Wankan to the curriculum. And you guys don't know those kata, but those are, uh, well, those are kata that we have later on in our system. Similar to Rohai, Unsu, Chinte, Sochin, Gojushiho, and Jin, we do not know from which teachers um, these derived. No official publication of the Japan Karate Association or their various groups make any precise statements about how these additional 10 kata got into uh, the Shotokan style. It is quite apparent that at least by name, they are all kata that Mabuni was also teaching in his Shichiru at the time. So all of a sudden, Shotokan's got these other kata. They don't know where they came from, but these were kata that Mabuni was already teaching in Shichiru. In view of Mabuni's immense reputation, it is also no surprise to see that there was also a lot of exchange between Mabuni and Funakoshi's school. Mabuni's son, Kanai, reports that Funakoshi himself would have sent his third son, Gigo, back to Japan, back from Japan to Okinawa in order to learn kata from Mabuni. So Funakoshi would send his son to learn kata from uh, Shichiru Man. Right after Mabuni's arrival in Tokyo in 1928, he evidently taught several of Funakoshi's top students like Isao Obata and Yasuhiro Konishi um, specifically. Even Funakoshi himself should have joined his students in training sessions with Mabuni, especially as he advised them to study new kata. So Mabuni was teaching kata to this, um, to Funakoshi's students uh, with Shirokan. Mabuni's son Kenzo remembers that in 1945, Gichin Funakoshi sent his sons, or his, sent his students, Masatoshi Nakayama, Misao Obata to Osaka in order to train with Mabuni. Short time after that, Funakoshi should have introduced Shotokan versions of the of Unsu, Niju Shiho, and Goju Shiho kata. This is probably the same visit that Masatoshi Nakayama talked about when he says, Master Funakoshi never stopped to study other forms of karate. When we visited Master Mabuni, he told me to learn the Goju Shiho and Niju Shiho kata. 
so that we could address them more intensively later on. Right after that, Kenwa Mabuni taught me these kata. Another senior student of Funakoshi and founder of uh, another um, big Japanese style of Wadaru, Hiro Nori Atsuka, remembers that many of Funakoshi's kata came directly from Mabuni or at least corrected by him. So a lot of the kata that they were doing in Shotokan were either taught by Mabuni or they were doing them and Mabuni went and fixed their kata. When you compare the Shotokan and the Shitoru versions of kata like Unsu, Goju Shiho Dai and Sho, Jin, Kosku Sho, Basai Sho, Chinte, Nisei Shi, it is quite striking that they basically just vary in some of the Shotokan specific adjustments. So what they're saying is between the two styles, the kata basically look the same except for the fact that the Shotokan version changes some of the techniques to look more like they how they do them in Shotokan as far as like um, using a kibidach instead of shikudach, um, using a back stance or kokutsudach instead of nekawashidach cat stance like we use it. Um, and instead of using like front kick, they would do yokugeri. So it's like in, um, for those of you that know Pinan Yondan, right? Uh, Caitlin, you know how we, we pull the hands and we turn and we make the hammer fist and the front kick? Well, in Shotokan, it's the same, but instead of, um, they do like a back fist and a side kick instead of a hammer fist and a front kick. So it's a little, that, those are the little things that are different. Um, so just, the only difference is just some of the little small style things. A close relationship is thus evident, which suggests a strong influence by Mabuni. So Shotokan was heavily influenced, especially in their kata, by Kenwa Mabuni. Good. So, in consideration of these facts, we can say without a doubt that Japan Karate Association Shotokan has been heavily influenced by the founder of Shitaru, Kenwa Mabuni. At least half of the 26 kata in Shotokan come directly from Mabuni or have been corrected by him. So, half of the, at least half of their kata that they do now was either taught to them by Mabuni or fixed by Mabuni. Kenwa Mabuni was thus much more important for the development and shape of the Shotokan style of Shotokan than it is today usually assumed or acknowledged by the representatives. Mabuni was without doubt an outstanding karateka or karate practitioner. His research and work still highly affects the world's karate scene. Next to his sons and successors Kenai and Kenzo, Kenwa Mabuni had a huge amount of important students. Over the years, most of them founded their own styles and organizations. Mobuni Shitaru is today one of the biggest karate styles with dojo and branches all over the world. Kenwa Mobuni died May 23rd, 1952 at the age of 62 years old. And we're gonna finish with a quote by Mobuni. Those people who are truly thinking of the future of karate should not keep a closed mind and limit themselves to learning only an empty shell, but should strive to study the complete art. So don't be up, don't be closed-minded. Be always open to learning as much as you can from whoever you can, um, especially about about your style. Learning every aspect that you can um, of your style, which takes a long time and a lot of hard work and a lot of um, a lot of training. Okay.